Hi, in this video we're going to talk about Bayes' theorem. Now Bayes' theorem is uh, kind of an extension of the law of total probability. And so let's start with the law of total probability example. Uh, so I got an auto insurance company insures drivers of all ages. ages and actuary uh, compiled the following statistics on the company's insured drivers. So we got this data given to us in the form of a table. We have uh, the ages of drivers separated from 16 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 65, and then 66 to 99. Uh, we have the per probability of an accident for each of the drivers in the different age categories and the portion of the company's insured drivers. And now the question is calculate the probability that a randomly selected driver from the company uh, that the company insures has an accident. Sorry about that. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to recognize is that if I add up all those uh, percentages there in, in that last column, if I add them all up, I get one. In other words, uh, those, uh, all of the drivers that the company insures can be separated into one of these four categories. Those four categories, and, 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 so those four categories form a partition of the sample space. So I'm going to write it this way. So I'm using a capital D with a subscript of 16 to 20 as the uh, drivers. That's rec representing the, the set of drivers in the 16 to 20 age group, and, and likewise for the other, uh, the other three groups there. So next I'm going to decide, well, how many people do I want to start with? Now, I see that the pro you know, in each age group I have a, 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 to two decimal places, I have the, uh, the, the probability a driver comes from that age group, and then to two decimal places I have the probability that an accident is occurring in, within that age group. And I know I'm going to be multiplying those things together, so uh, I'm going to use a one with four zeros. In other words, I'm going to use 10,000 as my starting point here. And now 10,000, if I have 10,000 drivers that, that are being insured, and uh, uh, I'm going to multiply that by the probabilities there of, of you know, each driver being in the different age groups. So, for instance, the uh, 16 to 20 year old would have, uh, there would be 10,000 times 0.08 or 800 of those drivers. Uh, 21 to 30 would be 10,000 times 15% or 1,500 would be from the 21 to 30 age group and so forth. So you can see the, the numbers that I have there that I've added. Uh, in, in, you know, in parentheses above each, uh, the, the cap D's in parentheses above that is the number of drivers that I have in each, uh, each of those age groups. Now, uh, in each age group, for each of those drivers, there's a probability that uh, there's an event that the driver has an accident or not. And so I use a cap A uh, to represent that the probability, uh, cap A to represent the event that uh, a driver has an accident and A complement then would be the event that the driver does not have an accident. Okay, so now let's look at the top left block. I mean, how many drivers are we talking about in that top left block there? So those are drivers that are 16 to 20 and, and have an accident. And I know that 6% uh, of, of, uh, of the drivers from 16 to 20 have an accident. There are 800 of those. And so I multiply 800 times 6% and I get 48 drivers uh, of the 10,048 of them there are in that top left block. Now be careful, a common mistake that students often make would be multiplying the 10,000 times the 0 .06, but that would be saying that there was a 6% chance that uh, a, a random person from the company you know, had an accident because you're, you'd be multiplying it by the 10,000. That's all of the drivers. So you're not saying six per, that 6% that in the table there is not saying 6% of all the drivers um, have an accident. So 6% of the drivers in the 16 to 20 age group have an accident. So don't multiply the 6% times the 10,000. You multiply the 6% times the 800. That's how many drivers are in that age group. Or, so then you end up with 48 drivers um, having an accident in that age group. And of course, if you take 800 and you subtract 48 to get the number of drivers that didn't have an accident in that age group, you'd get 752. Likewise, if we move to the uh, next block in the, on, on the top row there, I'm looking at the drivers in the uh, 21 to 30 age group uh, who have an accident. Well, there's uh, a 3% chance that one of those drivers has an accident, and there's, and there's 1,500 of those drivers. So it's, I've got 45 drivers uh, would have an accident in that age group, and, and then, of course, 1,500 minus 45 to get the number of drivers that did not have an accident in that age group would be 1,455. And then you populate the rest of the, the values in the, in the Venn diagram the same way. So the 4,900 times 2% uh, would be 98. Uh, subtract that from 4,900, you get 4,802. 2,800 times 4% would be 112. So you have 112 drivers in the 66 to 99 age group that were involved in an accident. 
uh, and then that would leave 2,688 that were not involved in an accident. And so now you got everything, uh, you got the Venn diagram done. You're, you're, you can answer any question that you want to, you know, any question that you're posed with, 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 with the Venn diagram now. So in this case, we're asked, the event that we're asked to calculate the probability of, we, it's the event that a randomly selected driver from the company uh, that the company insures has, has an accident. So that's just the probability of A, and I know the probability of A uh, having an accident is the number of uh, outcomes of A divided by the number of outcomes in a survey or sample. And the number of outcomes in A would be the 48 plus 45 plus 98 plus 112, um, dividing that by 10,000, and I get a 30.3%. So that's my answer uh, to this law of total probability problem. This is a basic law of total uh, standard, I should say, law of total probability uh, problem. Okay, so um, let's see. So now let's go back and let's change the question a little bit. Now let's say that I'm asked to calculate the probability that a randomly selected driver from that the company insures has an accident, given that the driver is between 16, uh, ages 16 and 20. So I want you to pause the video for a second and, and think about that and, and, and maybe you know, try, to, try to finish this problem. Okay, so I wanted you to pause the, the video and the, the probability that I seek right here is the probability of, of A given uh, cap D sub 16 to 20. And the, I was trying to be a little tricky here. I'm, it was a little bit tricky. That's actually given to us in, in the problem. Uh, that's the 0.06 that's given to us. That's the probability of an accident given that the driver is, is between 16 and 20. So those probabilities are these conditional probabilities uh, right here. Now, if you didn't recognize that, you, you know, we have the Venn diagram set up. When, so you would have ended up, if you didn't recognize that, you should have taken the, the 48 uh, uh, were the drivers in that age group who had accidents, divided by the 800 were the drivers in that age group. Uh, and so you would have gotten the 0 0.06 that way too, but you kind of go and doing some circular reasoning there because the way we got the 48 was using the 6%. So, uh, so going back again, these numbers that are given to you in the, uh, in, in, the, in the problem are actually these conditional probabilities that I have listed right here, the probability of an accident given that the driver is in the different age groups, okay? So now, let, let me ask another question. Let's say, uh, now calculate the probability that a randomly selected driver from the, that the in company insures is between ages 16 and 20, given that the driver has an accident. So look at what I've done here. I've interchanged the roles of the events. Instead of, uh, instead of asking you for the probability of event A, given the probability of event D, 16 to 20, I've inter interchanged that, and, and this is an example, when you interchange those events, is an example of, of a Bayes theorem problem. Now I'm asking for the probability that the driver was between ages 16 and 20, given that there was an accident. So again, this is, uh, 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 this is a Bayes uh, theorem problem, and uh, so given that the person was involved in an accident, means I'm just going to ignore all, all the other outcomes uh, and, and so I'm talking about the people listed in the Venn diagram now because I was given that there was an accident. Now I want to know, well, uh, now what's the probability that the person was in the 16 to, to 20 age group? So I've got 48 out of the sum of all those numbers in the, in, in the Venn diagram that's shown, and that's 303. So I end up with 48 over 303, uh, which ends up being 15.8%. So that's my answer. Um, that's, that's it. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to uh, talk about, I mean, this is how I would do the problem. Uh, but for the rest of the video, I'm going to talk about some, um, uh, some notation, some, some notation and, and, and just to derive the formula for you. But I, I, I'm almost tempted not to do it because it's, uh, there's nothing new here. This is just an application to a, a problem where we have um, a partition of the sample space, kind of like the law of total probability. Uh, same situation as law of total probability. But I feel obligated to do it. There's formulas that, um, uh, that you're going to see if you, uh, you know, when you're looking at, at, uh, at, at solutions to the SOE sample questions, for instance. Uh, you're going to see some, prob some probability formulas, so I want to show those to you. Um, but again, this is how I would do the problems. Just use a Venn diagram. I think it's a lot easier. If you'll look at some of the solutions to the sample questions and compare them to what we've done with these Venn diagrams, I think you're, you're going to agree using the Venn diagram is just a lot easier to do. And so, um, okay, so now let's, let, me, let me work my way towards some, some of these formulas. So uh, what I want to recognize is that the 48 divided by the, the sum of those numbers is just 
The sum of those numbers, 48, 45, 98, and 112, are just the number of outcomes of A. And then uh, in the numerator, that's the number of outcomes in the intersection of A with the, uh, with the event that the driver is between 16 and 20. That's just a, this, is, this is the formula for how you would calculate a, a, a conditional probability. Notice that I can divide both numerator and denominator by the number of outcomes in the survey. Uh, and uh, numerically then what I would get is instead of taking 48 divided by 303, which was my answer that I got before, now I'm taking 48 divided by 10,000 and dividing that by 303 divided by 10,000. Again, you're, you're going to get the same thing. So now uh, what I'm saying then is if you look at this last equation, this, uh, the, 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 first two, the first equal sign in the last equation, I'm going to change then the uh, number of outcomes in, on the right-hand side of that equal sign, I'm going to change the number of outcomes to the probability. Uh, so I just get that the probability of uh, uh, cap D for 16 to 20 given cap A would be the probability of the intersection of those two events divided by the probability of cap A. That's just, <clears throat> that's just a basic definition. <clears throat> Excuse me, we talked about this definition the first time we talked about conditional probabilities. I mean, this was, uh, we, we talked about this, this condition. And now, the, the last, uh, on this last equa or expression in the numerator there, I have an intersection. And so remember, when you have an intersection, you can write that probability of an intersection of events as a product. The probability of, in this case, cap A, given that the driver was between 16 and 20, times the probability that uh, the driver was between 16 and 20. Okay, so let me, that, and that's, that's Bayes' rule. That's, those, that's what you see is, uh, you know, when you see a Bayes' rule or Bayes' theorem, Bayes' rule and Bayes' theorem are used, those words are used interchangeably. A Bayes' theorem problem, this, this is it right here. So let me summarize for you. Uh, so Bayes' theorem is the result of applying this, this fact for dependent events. Remember when you have dependent events? Well, let me back up. Let me, let's, if you had independent events, the probability of A intersect B is just the product of the probability of A times the probability of B. You don't have any conditional probabilities in your, in your formula. But for dependent events, so your, the, the Bayes theory is a result of applying the, this, this fact, this equation that I have there for, that, that's a fact for dependent events. The probability of A intersect B is the probability of A given B times the probability of B, or you could write it by interchanging the roles of A and B. You could write that as the probability of B given A times the probability of A. So that's the, that's the fact that we're going to apply to the situation where either one of, uh, either A or B, one of, one of those two is part of a partition of the sample space. Okay? So for example, if, if, if event B was forming an event that formed the partition of the sample space, you're going to be asked to calculate something like the probability of B given A. That's, that's Bayes' theorem that you're going to be asked to calculate. You, you recognize that that's the probability, just definition of conditional probability. That's the probability of A intersect B times the probability, of, uh, I'm sorry, divided by the probability of A. And then the probability of A intersect B, I could write, uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the probability of A intersect B I could write as the probability of A given B times the probability of B, so kind of you know interchange those uh, those roles again, and and that's what uh, that's again that's what uh, that's that's every Bayes theorem problem will be given to you, uh, will be set up this way, and 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 this is you know uh, this is the fact. So let me go back to the uh, problem that we started with in this example because I took it from one of the sample questions uh, for exam P. So this was, the sam this was the question that we started with, and, uh, um, or this was the setup in the very last question that we did here. Calculate the probability that a randomly selected driver from the company, uh, that the company insures is between ages 16 and 20, given that the driver has an accident. And so this is, this is a standard Bayes theorem problem. So uh, I'm looking at uh, the, the probability of uh, the event cap D, given that the driver was 16 to 20, that's one of the events that forms the partition of the sample space, and then uh, I want to find the probability of that event given some other event, uh, uh, cap A, that's, that's dependent on, on that. Okay, so again, my, my suggestion though to you is just to use the Venn diagram on this. Okay, so uh, that does it for this one. We'll do, we'll do another example in the next video. I'll see you then.